as I say to myself, I cartwheel to work every day. <laughs> and i tell my team that if you're not cart wheeling to work every day then maybe you should be working somewhere else kapil sharma is literally i mean we were chasing and i was chasing kapil sharma for the last 2 to 1 and a half years mm. yes we've been having conversations with him for a long time mm. because um, and and he he was also very keen that what next for him mm. we were doing well in a few countries and of course we were getting so big in the us and suddenly one day we were looking at the map as a team and we were saying that we want to just be there in every country and literally it was like a switch which was flicked have you always wondered how a film makes money are you one of those people in your friends group who's always talking about box office numbers or are you curious to know what goes in and around a producer's mind who is a producer who spends the money who makes the money budget kitna lagta hai profit kitna banta hai hi i'm vanita kohli khandekar and i'm going to take you on this journey beyond the box office I'll be chatting with producers, studio heads, trade analysts, directors, and even script testers. People who have money and some people who don't. Don't worry, मैं उनसे उनके onset experiences के बारे में नहीं पूछूंगी. किसने कौन सा prank किया ये भी नहीं पूछूंगी. So stay tuned to Beyond the Box Office. Netflix is that word which evokes so many different. thoughts feelings emotions facts it's that one brand which has changed how we view video how we watch entertainment see entertainment what studios and filmmaking is all about netflix began as a video rental company sometime in 2007 in 2013 it got into house of cards and then the global entertainment business changed like a house of cards frankly it set off a whole motion of changes which we are still experiencing in the world and today to talk about some of those changes in india i have with me netflix's head of india monica shergill it's funny but i'm meeting her in the week that hira mandi which has been one of their biggest uh, series in the recent times has is trending in 43 countries welcome monica lovely to have you on beyond the box office thank you vanita nice to always chat with you first hira mandi you want to talk about that because i know that that that's the big news for this week as far as you're concerned yeah it's actually huge uh, sort of uh, news for us because uh, we launched it on 1st of may mm. and just within the first week it has absolutely raced to trending in the top 10 of 43 countries and that is actually a first for any indian original series or any indian title mm. uh, which is uh, you know a branded original created by the netflix team with the creators a commissioned series so it's very very exciting uh, we somewhere knew that we wanted this outcome and that it would be so big because that's how we envisioned it and that's how uh, you know sanjay leela bhansali's uh, vision of hira mandi was but when it actually happens and it happens so quickly within the first 6 7 days i think that's the most special part but you've had a, you've you seem to be having a good year that i saw chamkila which lovely film How's cult, that cult doing? film, cult, cult film. film. It has really, uh, you know, uh, popped in the cultural zeitgeist. It is such a special, special film by Intiaz and everyone who's been a part of it: Diljeet, A R Rahman, uh, Pariniti, and every talent HOD. Actually, I would like to say, you know, a lot of times HODs who are on uh, sort of stories or any format of storytelling don't get called out. I think between the editor Arti Bajaj uh, and Sylvester Fonseca, who's uh, been the DOP, mm. and so many people across that whole team who've contributed, and similarly for Hira Mandi, uh, I think uh, it's truly special. You know, but it always hasn't been smooth sailing for Netflix in India. Globally, you're huge. You know, two hundred seventy million subs. You're talking about thirty-four billion revenues in India. You have seriously large numbers if I look at Comscore data, but you came in in 2016 netflix came in and you i know joined in 2019 but it wasn't smooth st- uh, sailing to begin with but i remember us chatting last year about what happened in the initial phase of the journey and then when you came on how some of the changes happened could you take my viewers through some of that monica for sure actually it was uh, um it was a hard journey hmm. uh, at least uh, i can say so when i joined um in 2019 in mid of 2019 but if i just rewind back to 2016 uh, you know it's something funny when i joined uh, netflix 
uh, one of our uh, one of my global colleagues you know uh, and we were talking uh, and i said so uh, how how did you decide when to start programming in which country etc i was still getting onboarded oriented with the company and she said something really uh, fun which uh, has always stuck with me uh, it was like uh, you know that we were doing well in a few countries and of course we were getting so big in the us and suddenly one day we were looking at the map as a team and we were saying that we want to just be there in every country and literally it was like a switch which was flicked yeah in january and, 2016 yes, i yes. remember and uh-huh. and we were available in some i think uh, 130 odd countries on you know uh, Uh, it was just rolled out in one go like that mm-hmm. and then intentionally we started setting up local teams setting up programming and that's how it happens mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. even as we speak there are certain countries where we are still where we've been there but we are still in the process of actually setting up those local teams etc so 2016 we started Correct. there was no local team uh you know it was just the international content mm. and uh, um, audiences who had been watching while visiting internationally mm. or who were watching through their vpns through family accounts etc mm-hmm. uh, who were familiar with netflix and actually uh, the content on netflix was making waves all over the world mm. so that's how we started the first original you know which was sacred games that came sometime in 2018 season 1 okay. yeah and then when i joined in mid of season uh, uh, in mid of 2019 mm-hmm. uh, a couple of months into my joining uh, was uh, or a month into my joining sacred games 2 was happening mm-hmm. so uh, and before that just delhi crime season 1 had, had happened. happened so we started off with these massive successes and something totally new for the indian audience mm-hmm. and so much love and expectation and after that we had like you rightly said wasn't smooth sailing because uh, we didn't have a local team yeah. and we were not prepared to get so much success and love so suddenly there was no planning to really kick off production in india that mm. quickly or it's a process always and uh, um, i think uh, there was a non local team which was looking into commissioning and they were experimenting they were still in their minds they were experimenting they were testing waters they hadn't expected this sudden success mm-hmm. and love and uh, um, and then the programming was being run out of la yes i yes, remember that exactly Sorry, yeah. exactly and there was uh, no local team mm. and they were testing and they were trying different things mm. and of course it was it became such a huge trial phase mm. to uh, you know try new ideas and at the same time uh, you know other platforms had local teams already Mm. so they were programming to local tastes mm. you know so mm. therefore the difference between netflix and the other platforms was so up. stark mm. and because of the success of sacred games mm. sometimes when you have a huge success then that also becomes something that weighs you down mm. sometimes mm. so these beautiful titles which were so good also became the only benchmark for everything else that was coming which was more in the experimental space so um when i joined in mid 2019 is when i started putting the team together mm. i mean i think bella took over in april 2019 mm. then she was very clear there has to be a local team it cannot be commissioning out of uh, the us and then uh, bella you know, bajaria is bella the global bajaria she is the global yeah. head of yeah. content she is yeah. the chief content officer yeah. of netflix mm. and um, she's wonderful she understands india mm. she actually gets programming in general from all over the world because she's been a career creative exec mm. and she did understand the nuance of india so she was very clear and she insisted that there has to be a local team mm. and uh, um, i actually barely got about 7 8 months before we had covid. the covid hit and so actually 70% of my team was hired during that time mm. but uh, oh. we were working on our laptops like crazy mm. to really get the slate started you know the first most important thing when you're running a service mm. is to actually have a strategy who are you talking to what is the size of audience that every story must address and what do you want to be for that audience you know mm-hmm. you have to answer those really fundamental questions mm-hmm. they are fun questions but are also very hard questions because uh, netflix as a brand has always been this global brand mm. telling these global stories and uh, um, you know having the best consumer experience by way of product 
uh, everything looks a certain way mm. which is different from how a lot of uh, uh, you know indian content was looking at mm. that time which which is the difference people saw in sacred games also when mm. it came mm. you know it just looked so different so cinematic and different from anything that a series world would bring to you mm. so i think um, just getting the team together setting the strategy in place and really defining who do we want to be for the indian audience and what do we want to offer them what was that so, definition who do you want to be we actually uh, and i think we are well on our way to being that we want to be the most definitive entertainment service streaming mm. entertainment service mm. for the country we want to be the uh, service with the most diverse high quality storytelling uh, in the country and also we want to take indian creators and indian stories and the love that the indian audiences have for their entertainment we want to take it on the global stage also so when you when you have that goal i know that it sounds like a very broad elevated goal mm. but then you start breaking it down mm. and you start saying okay if my goal is to really program a diverse slate mm. and this is my spectrum how do i keep catering to the core audiences mm. which mm. love a lot of international cinema international storytelling mm. Mm. because everybody the most elite of um, indian audiences love their own cinema love their own everybody in every country loves their own storytelling more than actually they love which uh, something which is coming from elsewhere mm. the appreciation fundamentally for storytelling from different cultures has gone up dramatically mm. and a lot of it i think is also uh, you know mm. uh, credited to what uh, reed and ted have done with the service and how they rolled it out across but i think what doesn't change in every country is how much you love your stories of your own milieu mm. your own people you want to see yourself reflected you mm. want to see someone who's your like your friend mm. your mother your partner your child mm. yourself mm. you know and that is something which is very very special and unique so when we were planning the slate that's what we actually wanted to reflect we mm. wanted to start picking ideas that will both be relatable and be surprising you have to be both you know you've you've put so many things into that that thought but i'll just step back to 2019 you've just come from woot i know that you you were part of the success of satyam vijay the yeah. so you've come with this and i know that 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 show was very close to your heart oh okay. you you really yeah. this thing and you're sitting in 2019 and just covid is about to come or covid has happened you're planning for a slate which is you know knowing that development work takes anywhere from 18 to 24 months yeah, in india easy. for a slate which is going to come 2 years down the line how do you predict i mean and not only in 2019 but even now how does the green lighting thing for something in the future work i find that fascinating you know how do you make those calls uh and then you get some of them right you get some of them off yeah. things of get but you have to get large them yes. largely right yes yes that that is actually the truth of the uh, business that entertainment is a hits and misses business mm. you have to you have to understand that and you have to be a little scared by it but you have to be lots more excited by it that's the magic of being in this place and if you're the person who is willing to uh, you know take those bets and who's clear about why you're taking those bets mm. and you're excited by it but you're a little nervous about it i think you're it's in a, a good, good place space. to be in and i think it's very important when you're leading a large team mm. to be able to make them confident enough of actually uh you know throwing your might behind those bets of bringing in the rigor mm. to know why a certain bet work could mm. work potentially mm. mm -hmm. for a large enough audience mm. and why when you're taking a small experimental or niche bet that you must produce it in such a way that uh, you know you keep it contained so that it has the ability to actually uh, shine and not have its budget weights give me an example weight down give, give me an example from bets you took in 2019 which you see playing out now because many of them are playing out you know now. now there have been so many titles that we've done that uh, bets that we took in actually um, hira mandi was uh, mm. a, a, a creative bet that i started on uh, you know when i joined in 2019 mm. um you know sanjay had met uh, uh, ted and bella mm. and they knew that they wanted to 
sort of collaborate and do something and you know Hira Mandi was the idea that we started on it's a story that he had been living with and how big it should become was something that we decided locally in Uh terms of our investment in terms of it was not a decision that someone sitting in LA would take or would even sort of understand of Mm -hmm. what does it mean to have uh, a filmmaker like Sanjay Leela Bansali mm. make series in India. Mm. What is that leap for him? Mm. What does it mean in terms of investment? What does it mean in terms of his craft? Mm. He makes one film in, uh, you know, three years. Uh, what does it mean to get him to do an eight part series? Mm-hmm. And what would it look like? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, sort of uh, understanding and that kind of uh, thought that went behind it, that kind of collaboration, understanding his vision, adding a Netflix perspective to Mm. that vision. Mm -hmm. Because that leap that you have to take from a a film format Mm. to a series format, a a limited series, by limited I mean a long format series but a season format which is limited. Mm. It's not a, I mean uh, SLB had made um, a series at uh, uh, Star India mm. when I was there many years ago, which mm. was called Saraswati Chandra. Oh yeah, I yes. remember that. So huh. he was familiar with the series huh, format, huh, huh, but huh. in a indefinite series format. That was linear television. Linear this is television. On, on demand. So yeah. What yes. does it mean to tell your story in this format? So I think, uh, and the writing uh, is completely different. The way you plan everything is completely different. So I think that was a very interesting journey. Mm. Um, many other uh, titles, you know, uh, Delhi Crime 2 and how it should shape up, uh, you know, was a very important uh, conversation at that time after all the accolades that it had got. And I still remember, um, you know, when we ran into uh, uh, reshoots and I stopped the right, like, you know, the shoots and I got people to rewrite and Uh redo. Uh And Delhi Crime 2 actually became one of our most successful seasons and so loved it was so loved and uh, uh, you know by the audiences reviewed so well by the critics uh, but before that there were all those comments about uh, you know uh, netflix is getting it all wrong they don't know there was a lot for a long time there wrong was a time. lot of uh, you remember that earnings call in 22 when reed expressed frustration that they were not getting anywhere in the india market and re- it ricocheted across the world i did a story also around yes, that time yes. And he said that in Jan 22 in an earnings call and 22 was the best year of your life in yes, India as yes. luck would have it. Actually, uh, you know what um, What most people misunderstood, mm. uh, he was not referring yeah. to how the India uh, content slate or business is doing. What he was actually trying to nuance is that in most markets, he was trying to nuance the complexity of the market. Mm. You know, in most markets, when you get a certain... Uh, uh, you know, a uh, few titles right. that you're your, right, uh, your, your, yeah. yeah, the flywheel, flywheel sort of goes said. Uh, on. Mm. And also because, uh, you know, there is a certain pricing power, you know, and parity that is there. You, you've got product market fit. Correct. India is a very nuanced market, a complex market where uh, what we've seen is formulaic cinema a lot of times, mm. uh, you know, what works. 10 other people start making it, uh, you know, start planning the same thing. Uh, Television has also been like that. If you've seen, if one type of storytelling works, then many such stories come. Mm -hmm. We have not been a market that has experimented a lot in the entertainment space. And I think what I see as the strength of Netflix from that time to today, Mm. if you just look around, even in the streaming environment or anywhere else, the amount Netflix has experimented and innovated, Mm. that is why we have done a complete turnaround and we are sitting today on a very, very successful service, the fastest growing service within Netflix and in the market also. Uh, I'm sure your third party numbers (laughs) should (laughs) corroborate that. But But, um, it's it's because of uh, really, uh, you know, learning a lot, listening and learning a lot very fast, setting the right strategy and knowing the strength of Netflix as a platform, which is to program for different tastes and not just drop one title which everybody has to like for the next few months. We operate at scale and we succeed at scale. This metrics business is a tough one 
because it's tough not just for people like me who look at the business, but how do creators deal with it? What do you share with them to tell them, you know, okay, so uh, Hira Mandi is trending in 43 countries. But how do I know that Hira Mandi is a success? How many people have viewed it? How long did it? What is the completion rate? You know, those things. Where do, you may not share it with a media and analysts, but how in the creative ecosystem is that feedback? Because that feedback is also critical for creators to do uh, better or to understand what audiences like. This is a brilliant question, Vanita, because we come from a space where we want to educate the creators mm. about how their content is doing, just like you get, uh, you know, feedback, direct feedback from box office collections. Mm -hmm. Television, linear TV is it's a slightly a more nuanced uh, mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And really in linear TV, uh, it took a long journey. Uh, I mean, we know how long it took and different sort of bodies being formed, different sample sizes, etc. Uh, even now, there is a lot of, you only work off a sample size and extrapolation. Mm. Streaming is absolute. In that sense, the good thing is that in streaming, you know who is watching, uh, how many people, what is their completion rate, what is the engagement, how many people started watching something. And this is data that we share with our partners. Creators who work with us on any title, in so fact, it's mandatory for us to do this. We do... We do a light call um, after the first five, six days or mm. within the first 10 days, mm -hmm. which is broadly giving all trends to them. Then we do, it depends on us, uh, you know, how many times some creators are more keen to know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really love those creators who are very keen to know how something is What doing. do you share with them? Can you give, give us some sample? Uh, we share, see, numbers. I can share with you what we share with them at the end of 28 days. Okay. Which is not the entire period. We, okay. we do uh, something at the end of a month, which mm -hmm. is four weeks, which is a good number of uh, mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. or four weekends mm -hmm. of viewing because weekends are very important when people mark from Friday to Sunday. There's a lot of viewing during the weeks is also. It? During the, yeah, yeah, it's, see, streaming is continuous viewing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, weekends and holidays, naturally so, are, yeah, it's, oh, it spikes uh, huh? because people have more time. Mm -hmm. Right. It's mm -hmm. simply a function of more time at hand. People mark content. There's a my list feature mm -hmm. where people Correct. mark, people mm -hmm. download mm -hmm. and watch uh, while they're traveling or, you know, so all those features are there. So uh, we do a 28 day call and then we also do at the end of three months, mm -hmm. you know, something if there's additional to share what mm -hmm. has uh, been the trajectory, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because uh, for streaming, it is not day one that matters. Day one, it drops. In most other mediums, like particularly in cinema, it's the day one and opening weekend mm. or max second weekend. weekend. You know, whereas uh, on streaming, uh, for us, the day drops is day zero. Ah, it's okay. the day zero and ah. you go up from there. But is so it we share, we share, uh, you know, um, how many, like what percentage of people have viewed it on the service from, you know, the overall service numbers. We share, uh, you know, the engagement. How has the engagement been? Mm -hmm. We share sometimes, uh, you know, in titles where there are certain points of drop-offs. Mm -hmm. We share that mm -hmm. so that they know that they get story feedback also that what could we have done better. Mm -hmm. We share overall when we make a renewal decision on a series. Mm -hmm. It's absolute validation for the creator that we have done well. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, uh, uh, because it is successful, a season two is coming. Mm -hmm. So we share, a, you know, an understanding which is very holistic, mm -hmm. but not just for the consumers. Uh, as a streaming service, uh, you know, barring YouTube, where the data is, you know, sort of because it's uh, a user generated platform and you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. how many people have watched something. Uh, Netflix is the only streaming service which is so transparent with its data. Our second engagement report is coming mm. in a few days and uh, where we reveal, uh, you know, the view hours mm. and, uh, uh, you know, there'll be certain new data that we'll share this time. Mm. But unfortunately, what, I, and this is my personal uh, take, you know, uh, the understanding of it is very limited. So people try to, instead of understanding the data holistically, there is a slightly narrow view of the data. 
of uh, so that is still a journey where the number for example of, for example um, if i'm not mistaken and we can correct this if i uh, don't have it right but in our first engagement report um, we just shared the titles and the view hours mm. we didn't differentiate the formats mm. as in film, film separately and series, and series separately mm. so uh, it can easily get misunderstood as title x had number of uh, you know these view hours and title y had lesser or more but actually formats are different, different. a series is anywhere six to seven hours, hours yeah. mm. and a film would be under 2 hours mm. so you know that also has a difference so i think we are also getting better at it i hope people's understanding also keeps getting better and better and that's the endeavor you know mm. that's the journey we are on and i think it's very important for streaming also to have some standardized i agree sort of viewing metrics some third party metric would be lovely but you know one thing you'd mentioned i remember when kohra became a hit last year and i'd done a story around not just on kohra but on netflix getting its india act together i remember yeah. because i'd done so many stories saying netflix doesn't seem to be getting its india but act but good together. thanks for pushing us <laughs> no, we been no, at not it not me it's not it's you guys pushing but the the i remember you saying that kohra had uh, hit the uh, among the top non english shows etc you said that the algorithm works like this that if the show is successful locally it will get pushed so how much of it is algorithm how much of it is marketing what combination of factors pushes a show i i i'm sorry hira mandi is the most recent example but feel free to pick up any other you mm-hmm. know rana naidu hai kohra hai i mean great women uh, comes and gulab chor nikal ke bhaga chor nikal ke bhaga i remember you telling me last time mein bahut acha yes. usne kiya yes. tha so what is a combination of factors which pushes it up and do we can how much can you manipulate it or how much or it is just the creative best thing that i tell a good story and just hope and pray that it pushes up you know uh, <coughs> it's a very interesting one because uh, there's a bunch of things that happen uh, when you create a story which mm. is coming on a streaming platform mm. uh, the first and most important thing is that people should know it's coming right okay. some people will discover it organically on product people mm-hmm. who exist mm-hmm. and whose taste is uh, aligned aligned mm-hmm. uh, you know um, genre preferences mm-hmm. taste there's a lot of uh, meta tags mm-hmm. on a title mm-hmm. right by meta tags i mean that if if it's a film a mm-hmm. hindi film mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, there'll be tags with uh, um, stars they'll uh, you know with uh, bollywood as a mm-hmm. genre mm-hmm. uh if it's a romance if it's a romcom they'll be that so mm-hmm. uh there is a definition of a title mm-hmm. uh, you know which comes on the service so product will serve it to uh, you know all the people with that mm-hmm. taste mm-hmm. and genre preference and also what is new mm-hmm. recency bias is a lot people like to watch new things what mm-hmm. is the latest mm-hmm. that's coming so a lot of people will see the trending yeah, what's top trend? 10 what's mm. trending what's mm. popular what's mm. new on netflix mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. all those rows actually tell you each row is meant to tell you something different and you know mm. because pe- different people respond to different things mm. what the role of marketing is to actually make people who are not on the service aware that this title is coming if something is coming and launching just like a film promotion will happen there'll be a promotion of a series or an ori- original film coming on netflix mm. and we will go out and tell people mm. right mm. so awareness is very important mm. when people come to that title mm. uh in the home country mm. when more and more people watch and love mm. two or three things happen mm. one is that uh, that title starts trending mm. and it immediately jumps to your top 10s mm. a lot of people like to select from top 10 mm. people need validation that Correct. what is worth mm. my time and there's so much particularly on netflix on any other service there is very little challenge mm. in the sense that there'll be few titles that you can watch mm-hmm. for us there are so many titles mm. to watch uh, you know from your own language because we program those many titles and mm. and i'm not just saying it for the heck of it you can actually corroborate it mm. in any given year mm. uh you know we are programming the number of titles we have on the service mm. across all formats from post theatrical pay one films uh you know to the originals that we create documentaries that we mm. have unscripted that we do 
series and original films that we do we were the only ones programming original films mm. you know there's so much to choose from and then there is all the global content in different mm. languages mm. right mm. so there is so much to choose from so so the top 10 row is a good way trending mm. top 10 etc mm. when something is good you know and more people watch it mm. they give a lot of oxygen to that title mm. right to mm. that story mm. and then oxygen not just on the service mm. actually off service a word of mouth starts. share an example na huh? share an example because uh, i've used kohra already aap koi aur Kohra, example uh, use karo railway men if railway, i were to okay. tell you uh, uh. railway men uh, trended in 35 countries besides india it did well in india and then so got pushed well. up it right? did so well in india uh. brilliant story mm. the word of mouth was so huge mm. uh, you know mm. and on a subject a uh, uh, you know uh, on a subject like uh, you know the night of the bopal gas yes. tragedy and uh, how these heroes came together mm. and and that story was so well loved that so many people spoke about it it became so big on the service mm. that it started trending in multiple countries uh, you know and it was in the top 10 list and actually it was the longest in the top 10 list another Meaning? measure of success mm. is uh, the number of weeks that oh. a title stays in the top 10 list huh. that actually tells you how much more successful it is huh. than titles that have been uh, you know for lesser number of weeks what is the longest railway men has been i think uh, just... much longer than see we had done i i recall we had done a 100 day press release mm. because it was on for 100 you know when a movie does 100 days how we used to celebrate it now it rarely happens in cinema silver but with so it. much uh, uh, competing content mm. on a streaming service and just as netflix we launch so many things after that so many post theatrical films coming um so many of global originals coming everything coming and it went way beyond 100 days are there countries which take more to the stories coming up? and not just diaspora kind of market but are there countries you told me latam for uh, chor nikal ke bhag and there was another one but are there countries which take more to stories coming out of india or it's just totally dependent on the story uh it's both uh-huh. it's both uh-huh. uh, some countries definitely have a more affinity uh-huh. uh you know just like we also like in india uh, we love watching korean dramas and dubs because uh-huh. romcoms are an underserved uh-huh. category in india uh we also love watching japanese anime yeah, in loads and we love watching hollywood content uh-huh. right uh-huh. same way indian content does very well in southeast asia because there's a lot of south indian uh, diaspora there mm. so south indian movies do well in middle east uh, our originals and our uh, uh, you know post theatrical films all do well turkey we do very well uh, poland we do very well mm. latam we do very well mm. sometimes we do well in germany also depending on certain titles in uk uh, you know uh, depending on certain titles and us that you know more diaspora but there is definitely uh, you know uh, a lot of affinity uh, and then when you have sometimes titles like hira mandi uh, or you have titles like uh, gangu bai mm. or you have titles like rrr mm. uh, you know or chor nikal ke bhaga which was a very taut uh, mm. thriller kind you of know thing. heist thriller heist thriller yeah uh, uh, you know and and like i said railway men mm. something that people had read something that felt like it was something they wanted to engage in mm. khaki did well in so many countries uh is it correct know? to say that germany is a sharuk market all uh, the stuff you've ne- licensed from uh, red chilies does it do well? i'm very curious because uh, i hear of these weird fan clubs of his in germany so I'm just really? curious i about, wasn't aware of that but he it's a particularly sharuk friendly market very interesting i i will i will uh, you know particularly <laughs> ask sharuk and red chilies <laughs> to do something which can trend in germany because i've heard i've India. heard this one um you know we've discussed hira mandi and we've discussed chamkila but uh and 22 was good what's 23 uh, 24 been like the first four months you've had some big releases what's coming up and what's the year been like so far and what's coming up as far as next i think uh the year has been us laughing all the way to the to most the uh, amazing uh, 
uh, you know validation from the audiences kapil sharma on the service the great indian kapil show mm. has been such a uh, i think uh, delight for our audiences our members and uh, the new ones who are uh, you know uh, joining us it has it has really been something that has um, single handedly of course we always have a very diverse slate mm. and mamla legal hai legal well, nice already mm. in its own charming and cute way mm. it had set the tone for comedy on netflix mm. but kapil sharma coming very quickly on the heels of that as a week on week uh, show uh, you know it just made uh, netflix an option for a lot of co viewing our post theatrical films were already beginning to do that you know because people like to see films and especially big theatrical films or even some of our original films mm -hmm. as co viewing opportunities because a film is a shorter format mm -hmm. you put it mm -hmm. together as a family and you can watch it depending on the subject but i think kapil sharma coming and we also decided to drop it as you know uh, available from 8 pm onwards every saturday so yeah. uh, you know we broke our own rule of uh, no appointment uh, on demand yeah is kapil sharma also in 12 countries across the world netflix has unrolled uh, advertising supported yeah. and ad supported tier yeah. you've also bought the rights for the wwe yes um so there's there is some attempt to broad base both the audience and the revenues that you get is kapil sharma a precursor to having a ad tier somewhere sometime in india uh, i'm just curious is that uh, i will we see more shows like these which and 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 therefore appointment viewing which is you know our uh, there's one thing which i find um, very sort of i would say unique and liberating at netflix mm. uh, there are many things but mm. this is the most important as a content person mm. is that your content strategy mm. is um, independent of every business pressure okay. your content strategy has to be tailored to the audience the audience that you want to win that you want to entertain mm. that you want to grow mm. so uh, kapil sharma is literally i mean um, we were chasing and i was chasing kapil sharma for the last 2 to 2 and a half years mm. you know we were oh, booing him yes we've been having conversations with him for a long time mm. because um, and and he he was also very keen that what next for him mm. you know and mm. we we did that special together Mm. uh you yeah, know yeah, yeah. Uh, i saw the, the his, we did the special mm. together Where because because actually kapil had been the winner of my uh uh you know the great indian laughter challenge season 3 when i was uh, star. Uh, uh, at star huh. and and you know to get him back to a stand up format mm. which which is also a, a very uh, in fact as we speak netflix is a joke is going on mm. in the us mm. it's our biggest comedy festival it's running to packed houses if you go anywhere in la right now mm. and across the us there are so many shows happening uh, oh, it's it's okay. just a month of laughs for everyone and there are people who queue uh, uh, you know queue up for tickets and entry it's it's really you fascinating one, so uh, i mean i was leaving the same day yeah. i i would have loved to but it was opening uh. night with the jerry seinfeld oh, okay. uh, you know packed uh, uh. show so uh, so we wanted to bring kapil back to um, netflix uh, i mean bring kapil back to where he started netflix. from which was a stand up special which was kapil talking about himself you know because when he was talking uh, in the show he was always getting everyone else to so we uh, so that was a plan to get him to really experience netflix in a different way and the mm. power of netflix mm. and actually when he did that which was kapil sharma i'm not done yet yes it became a raging hit mm. we didn't even promote it that much mm. we wanted to see how does it really mm. call out to mm. audiences mm. and uh, that became a raging hit he got messages from all over the world mm. you know his fans suddenly all wake he's such a huge uh, uh, talent and mm. so loved and yet he was surprised with what he experienced once his special came on netflix and i think that's when uh you know it, it mm. like uh, what we were uh, chatting about with him mm. actually became Kept a big vision. reality in his mind and he was got very excited about it mm. and uh, yeah and then that's how we planned so it was always a content move it was a content strategy and um, 
uh, we've uh, rolled out the ad tier in 12 countries mm. and as a company we really believe in testing and learning mm. we have to uh, get our ad service to scale in those countries Understood. and then gradually roll it out across so it is actually very disconnected from that okay but how do you expand the market from here i mean so netflix is at a certain position and there are several other ott but i think everybody the whole market is stuck at this 80 100 million subs and maybe 4 4 450 million viewers overall at an aggregate level how does the market expand beyond because tv is at roughly double that viewership so you know just curious about how you look at the market and where does netflix fit in you know um I think the one difference we have from other streamers, I would say, is that we don't look at uh, expanding the business in terms of expanding the sub base. Mm. Because eventually, success in streaming for us is about, uh, uh, you know, ha running a healthy business, which mm. is based on good revenue, which is based on very high engagement, mm. uh, and uh, which is based on, uh, you know, the eventual sort of uh, uh, profitability that you drive as a mm. business, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Because that we are a pure play streaming service and it's very important for us to actually run uh, a healthy business where we, where we are able to have the virtuous cycle mm. of uh, investing, mm. pleasing mm. and entertaining our audiences, and earning them. and plowing it back. Mm. You know, it, it has to be this great virtuous cycle mm. and which will bring the flywheel of, uh, you know, uh, continued and tremendous growth. And we are experiencing that taking short term decisions to increase subs and try these panic moves or uh, suddenly growing at, you know, in a race to the bottom way uh, is not something that we are interested in doing. And I think in the last few quarters, we have very definitively shown after the, uh, you know, the rough weather that first Netflix hit and the whole industry mm -hmm. hit. I think we have shown a tremendous turnaround from there. Mm. The quality of decision making uh, from a business point of view, mm. the number of hits we've had, uh, you know, uh, as content slates, not mm. just in India, but around the world, mm. in every country, we've become sharper and more focused on investing in uh, you know winning titles and what does it mean uh, to actually create higher quality uh, i mean if you've seen how baby reindeer has done, done how three body problem has been the most uh, unique series hmm. and uh, so many others that have uh, you know come recently you know uh, at one point there was this talk of you know netflix is spending so much on content in india i remember the 3000 crore figure floating around some years back but we learned from that and stopped never, talking I know about you, you stopped sharing your sub numbers also globally. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what, because Netflix was like this really transparent company. And it's but we are giving more transparency in the engagement report now. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, no, I've, I've seen that. But if one was to look at India and you know, and, you, and you're right, it is a pure play. It's the only pure play service there is because Amazon has shopping and that's where Prime comes in. Hotstar has a very profitable broadcast business which is there. Yeah, so Sony people has, sign so up people for have, different yeah. reasons. But here, this is pure play. What is the role India plays in the global scheme of things? You know, is it is it a market you come to because it's, it's got an audience for your product? Or is it also a market you come to because it tells good stories? Because it's among the few markets like Korea, which has a strong um, uh, creative ecosystem. So. Uh, uh, what are those some of the things that play on the Netflix, you know, in your global dashboard? What is the, just curious about that. You know, I always get very uh, sort of fascinated with this question and it keeps coming up again and again. I know, I know, I know. Uh, it's almost like as India, we are looking for validation that we matter to somebody. We are there, please watch us. No, please can we get business, us. my point is. So, <laughs> I really feel that... Uh, I think it's it's uh, a no-brainer okay. for any large company in the world, mm. not just in the entertainment space, but in any business, mm. you know, unless you want to have, you know, unless for very specific reasons, mm. you want to ignore one-fifth of the world's population, mm. uh, you know, and it has to be a very clear specific reason, which I don't <laughs> think entertainment is the business, business in which you can yeah. do that. Yeah. We are one of the biggest entertainment loving audiences in the world. Mm. We love our movies. We love our stories. 
we are one of the oldest oldest storytelling cultures mm. you know from our folklore to our mythology to i mean uh, i have read somewhere and i'm very sure it must be true mm. uh, that uh, the genesis of so many stories across the world is actually from the ramayana and mahabharat just as characters and stories and relationships and of course it's been there in greek mythology and so many other countries and chinese mythology and mm. history etc but india has been one of the oldest civilizations mm. and our storytelling culture is you know um, really second to none i would say it's one of the richest uh, our creative ecosystem uh, you know the talent that we have and mm. by the way we haven't even scratched the surface uh, on talent in india because our exposure levels have been limited for many many yeah. years and now you know with streaming coming in mm. our exposure levels of people who can get inspired see everybody needs to be inspired as plato said all art is inspiration mm. the more you read the more you watch the more punts you see people taking you know it does things to you for me when i'm reading something when i'm watching something it sets off so many ideas in my mind that oh my god what if this were to be done like this or that were be you know to be experimented with that's what i think so many people in our country have been waiting for have been starving for and i think what streaming has done it has democratized creation it has democratized uh, viewership. viewership you know access access is the most important thing to actually uh, inspiration mm. you know mm. you have to see something or know something to actually uh, so i think from that perspective uh, uh indian creator ecosystem is uh, we are no longer a, uh, a few people having access to a few dvds and uh, no, you know we were there we were, we were uh, much bigger no but no but uh, just having a view on different types of stories and having having you know um, sort of uh, this desire and this confidence to experiment mm -hmm. and having means to experiment because as as a service as a platform and many platforms all streaming platforms i think what we've also brought in is um, you know support to enable our creators to experiment mm -hmm. to tell different stories or to tell the same stories in a better way yeah in fact that's the reason i was asking you because we missed our whole premium tv yes, bus exactly. so we've grown that's in discontinuity we did yeah. not have the hbos of yeah. the world yeah so when you come in you know you have a film very nice film business and you have Uh, television linear broadcasting yeah. which is all daily soaps you and you've also done a lot of work all those workshops that you did yeah. you you run even now i think you run some programs for short films you run program for Many. talent with yeah. bafta all a, a lot of places which is basically helping the creative ecosystem develop so do you find it coming up to speed where are we on that and is netflix still in where making those investments in the creative ecosystem as a creative industry uh, i think we have the finest creators both mm. technicians uh, you know mm. from across from uh, you know the south indian film industry or all the industries that mm. language industries that mm. we have mm. and uh, hindi cinema industry we have a huge number of uh, you know talented people in every field of creation mm. i think what we've been uh, really missing mm. is actually uh, getting the latest and the best mm. uh, you know sort of training mm. for a lot of them so as netflix we feel that it's one of our primary responsibilities mm. if we want to delight our audiences mm -hmm. and we want to keep telling the most unique stories mm -hmm. the most high quality stories which actually on netflix will be judged not against what exists on other platforms in india mm. but actually against the best which comes from the world that was my on point. our service yeah, so when point. a story from india comes mm. and actually it's sitting next to a french story mm. or a hollywood title mm. or a korean title mm. or a spanish or a german or japanese it has to be of the same quality. quality it has to be produced and it has to be told it has to be written mm. you know in that way so i think for us what's really important Mm -hmm. is uh you know to train the entire ecosystem so we do many many workshops mm -hmm. uh you know we've done uh, workshops for screenwriting we've partnered with nfdc we run a beautiful dubbing initiative mm -hmm. you know 
which is uh, called swar samyam mm. uh, you know which is about giving opportunities to uh, lgbtqa uh, mm. talent to actually voice uh, mm. you know for our dubbing uh, mm. that we do mm. uh, to increase children's voices also okay. where required so mm. uh, you know from dubbing initiative to screenplay writing we've uh, done workshops for music editors there mm. are very few music editors music is such an important part, part of, of uh, uh, you know storytelling and we have very few because uh, you know while our movie business is phenomenal mm. and uh, amongst the best in the world um, the number of music editors is very few and when you're producing at volume and high quality which has to compete with the rest of the world we need to up level the talent and of course that talent is going to work everywhere it's mm. going to work with competition mm. it's going to work in other mediums mm. but that doesn't matter we have to keep expanding the talent pool mm. so that all of us you know as we say that you know uh, you know all boats must rise you mm. know so it's it's basically that approach that if we train the right talent mm. and we keep expanding the talent pool mm. whether it's through rec recognizing through bafta it's through uh, you know like in south since we are starting we are developing uh, our south slate mm. original slate mm. we've just done a production management workshop mm -hmm. in south because uh, you know the systems are slightly different and movie production happens a certain way mm. how do you do a uh, series production mm -hmm. in south mm -hmm. that is a new sort of uh, manner of working for everyone mm. so i think just doing across we do vfx workshops mm -hmm. because that is you know doing world class vfx is something which is very very important to mm -hmm. us so just looking at all of these things whether it's spotlight on writing we continuously do writing workshops mm -hmm. you know in fact we very openly share the netflix bible mm. uh, you know mm. uh, which is uh, you know given out to prepare pitches now mm. those pitches all will not come to us they will go everywhere else but i think it's very important for our writers and our writing community creator community to know what is the best way uh, a world class way to write a bible and mm. to pitch mm. so i think when we uh, and and that's i think that's part of our responsibility to do because we are getting so much from the creative community mm -hmm. from the creative e ecosystem so it's something that we have to do to enable and to expand that expertise but it's also the heart of your business it uh, absolutely the heart so, of our so, business so, you know, in it's, it's, every country it, tell me one thing you know i find that not just netflix but almost most streaming services have been slow off the block on tamil telugu bengali marathi whatever other non hindi language series and um, you might, you could buy films but you know is it because uh, hindi is also of course the biggest chunk of the pie and um, or what i'm or is it just a matter of time because everybody came in at 2016 17 and it's taking time so what what has or it is that those markets are not very ott friendly i just, just no actually curious. that's that's not true they are very streaming friendly in huh. fact uh, uh, our year on year growth on south uh, uh, you know viewing is 50% so they are very streaming friendly uh they watch international content also because mm. as you know there's language affinity also yeah with hollywood content and uh you know the the reason is what you said just mm. a while back mm. we miss the whole wave of premium television creation mm. so that thing it is very lag. difficult to write a premium series mm. and it takes a certain uh you know rigor and mindset and um I think the journey started in Hindi first mm. because for any streaming service you know uh, closer to Hindi cinema mm. since we all operate out of here mm. uh, and there was more affinity to uh, even amongst the uh, creators in the Hindi industry more mm. propensity to actually look at global series and want to create want to be a part of it the yeah. evangelization of the south creators mm. has been in general slower mm. some of them are very excited and they are all uh, sort of uh, you know now working at it also some of the series in the streaming space in south that were created were at a very small scale mm. for us as netflix when we come in for us it's important to create series of a certain uh, you know uh, quality stature i would say scale mm. because that's the expectation that the audience also yes. has from us i remember shailesh of ormax had once told me that 
this is when I was doing was why is Netflix in trouble story. He says, you know, Netflix is an aspirational brand. Everybody wants to be on it. Everybody wants to have an opinion on mm -hmm. it. What kind of pulls and pressures and what, and not just pulls and pleasures, but what kind of joy also that brings. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to know, sitting in the, the India, as the India head of this business, what kind of pressure and what kind of joy does being this aspirational brand, which set the ball rolling on streaming globally, what does that bring? You know, first I want to say that uh, Shailesh is right. We are an aspirational brand, but he's only half right. Because we are now a relatable brand mm. and yet we are aspirational. And that's where I think uh, uh, the, the most heady cocktail of Netflix is and mm. should be always. Mm. We want to be extremely relatable and close to our audiences. But we always want to also be a little aspirational because we want to push ourselves and we want the audience to continuously push us. Now, uh, that uh, can actually either be seen as pressure mm. uh, or actually it can be seen as uh, motivation. Mm. It can be seen as drive. Mm. It can be seen as uh, uh, once in a lifetime opportunity. And I speak here for myself. Just yeah. making it a little personal, personal there for me. Uh, you know, I've, I've been in the business for, uh, you know, more than two and a half okay. decades, starting out as a journalist, then becoming yeah. an entertainment executive, mm. doing many different kinds of things and mm. formats of programming. But uh, the experience that you have at Netflix mm. to actually really do the best work of your life, mm. the ability, the access, the tools that you have mm. to learn from the best across the world, to be so close to their work mm. in terms of just knowing, you know, how things are getting made, who are the people we are working with, what kind of stories are cooking and to be able to really partner with the best in your own country and market. That's mm. what I tell my team every day mm. that, you know, uh, let the world think that there is pressure. Mm -hmm. Actually, we don't feel that pressure. pressure. We feel the excitement. As I say to myself, I cartwheel to work every day. <laughs> and I tell my team that if you're not cartwheeling to work every day, then maybe you should be working somewhere else. No, so well, uh, you I, know, this is a wonderful profession to be in. And I think and I think just wonderful the best role time, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, to be doing absolutely. this. I never thought that I would get an opportunity to create things that I would love also creating mm. and learning from what everyone else is doing and keep doing the best and really uh, like just when we were doing the screening of Hira Mandi at the Egyptian theater, the iconic Egyptian theater in, in, in LA, LA yeah. in LA just last week, you know, and uh, I'm telling you, I, I literally had a lump in my throat because Good. I've traveled to LA for so many years for LA screenings. Mm for meetings from across different companies where I worked at and so many times from Netflix. And I hadn't thought that, um, you know, I would be standing on Sunset Boulevard looking at the Egyptian <laughs> theatre sign and I would hear Sarangi live Indian music playing <laughs> and uh, tea stalls and samosa and people dressed up in Indian finery oh. and a red carpet and everyone experiencing India in this beautiful way. <laughs> it was something. Now we yeah. want to star with uh, Sanjay Leela Bansali on the Walk of Fame. <laughs> but I mean, on that note, quickly, what are the big shows you're looking forward to this year? Uh, I think you've seen. We've seen Hira Mandi. Yes, Hira Mandi, but, Kapil but in the current Sharma, six months. Uh, couple of I think we've announced, we've announced a lot. IC814 hmm. uh, is a very big show that we are working on. We have a huge fan favorite, uh, you know, which is very, very big. Uh, while it seems, uh, you know, a specific show to people, but mm. Kota Factory Season 3. Oh, Kota yes. Factory is such a love title. Yeah, it's a big title. It's yeah. a very yeah. big title. Mm. Uh, then we have uh, a bunch of amazing movies coming. There are many series coming. I'm off yeah, yeah, no, now. No, We've announced everything. No, but what is on Monica Shergill's head, in, on the top of her head is what I was looking for. So you've named a few, so that's very good. Yeah, and... and uh, there are a whole bunch. I'm excited about everything. Everyone. You will be, you will be, uh, you know, keep getting surprised with the quality because I think that is something which we want to really take as a responsibility uh, uh, for us mm. being Netflix. Mm. 
that we have to uh, create, produce, and deliver high quality, unique stories at scale and with consistency. That is what differentiates Netflix from any other service all over the world. We are not about, uh, you know, uh, one title uh, and then break and then the next title. We are really a service that everything will not be to your taste. In fact, when people get upset, you know, somewhere it's nice that they get upset that uh, why is Netflix doing this or why did they make this and we <laughs> didn't like it and there's a lot of... So, it's nice that they get personal but also, you know, I, uh, I really feel, I don't know how to tell people that not everything is meant for you. In fact, yeah. there are so many more people who are watching that and loving it. Mm. That is why we make so much. That is why we give all this variety so that you can find and watch what is meant for you, your personalized Netflix. Good. And on that note, thank you so much, Monica, for being on Beyond the Box Office. Thank you. Look forward thank to you meeting for you again. Thank Ciao. you for having Thanks. me.